Hello everyone, my name is Tatiana James and today I'd love to share with you five tips to help you start your small business. So whether you are going to be making handmade items and selling them locally at your local shops or, or if you're going to sell them on Etsy or if you plan to start an online business and do drop shipping or print on demand or private labeling, whatever kind of small business that you would like to start, these tips are going to be applicable to you. And before starting this video, I did a simple search on YouTube to see what's already out there on this topic because I don't like to make videos where kind of everyone's repeating the same things. And so I assure you that these tips that you're going to hear from me in this video are unique. And I think that they're really important because as someone who built a small business many years ago, it turned into a very successful business, these are things that I wish I had known sooner. I do think that it would have helped me, especially in the beginning stages of building my business. So although these five tips may seem simple, they're really powerful. And today I want to just plant some seeds for you so that you can grow a beautiful, successful business. All right, so let's get started with number one. And number one is to create a vision. This is important, please don't skip this step. Um, there's two ways to go about building your business. You can just decide that I'm gonna build a business today and then you may just go with the flow and just take action and, um, and that can work. And then there's another way where you decide to build business, but then you create an action plan. You try and plan things out to the best of your ability before you get started, knowing that you're not gonna have all the steps of the process before getting started, but the idea is to create a vision of where you want to go, of what it is that you want to create. And I would hallucinate that the latter will help you to become more effective and spend your time more wisely working in your business. Because if you don't, then you can be a little bit scatter-minded and you might not be working on things that are gonna help you to um, achieve the goals that you have. And so creating a vision is important and I would say you should start there. We are at the top of the animal kingdom for a reason. We have these incredible brains and we have these things called neocortexes. And this is the executive function of the brain. This allows us to problem solve, to decision make, to think and act with the long-term goal in mind. And so we wanna maximize the capacity of our brains and the capability of our brains. And the way that we do that is by feeding our brains instructions. There is untapped potential here, but when you feed your brain instructions, your brain will work hard. So the vision, the beauty of the vision is that it allows you to create clarity and clarity is power. When you have a vision for the business that you wish to create and a long-term vision, I'm not just talking short-term within the first year, I'm talking like a long-term vision, then your brain is going to work around the clock to help you to achieve that goal and that vision. Just take a moment to look around you. And I wanna remind you that everything man-made that you see was first a vision. So this iPhone was first a vision before it was manifested here and I can now hold it and use it. And it's a very awesome device. <laughs> this uh, building that I'm in, this house was a first a vision. Everything that you see was first a vision before it was manifested in, in real form. And so your business is the same thing. You have to have a vision for what it is that you want to create and then that is how you will create it. So how do you create a vision? Well, I recommend starting with a vision statement. And so a vision statement is a big, ambitious statement about who you are and what is your intention in this world. It's forward thinking, it's direct, and it should be about one or two sentences. So you're really trying to summarize what it is that you want to create. And this vision statement is really going to help drive company culture when you do expand and build out your team. It's also going to help you to make the best decisions for you and your business. I often get asked, Tatiana, I'm just not sure about the decisions I need to make. Like I don't feel confident in making these decisions. But when you get clear on what your vision is for the company, you have your vision statement, you can always reference that. It's kind of like your guiding compass. And so when you have the option between two choices, you say, okay, which one is aligned with my vision statement? And so it's going to help with decision making. Microsoft is an example of a company who has a vision statement. And their vision statement is, 
Let me read it for you so I don't butcher it. A computer on every desk and in every home. Simple, straight to the point, and it summarizes exactly what their intention is as a company. And did they achieve that? I would say yes, a computer on every desk in every home. And so that helps their employees too because their employees now know what it is that they're working towards. And when it comes time for them to make individual decisions that they don't want to be asking higher up uh, on, on whether or not they should do that, they can be empowered to make those decisions themselves by referencing that vision statement. And then once you've got your vision statement, play around, you know, add to that vision, you know, add all the things that you want to create, what it is that you want to do and make it beautiful, make it juicy, make it enticing and then write it out and put it somewhere that you can see it every day. You want to make sure that you're looking at it every day because whether you realize it or not, it's getting registered in your unconscious mind and it's going to help you work towards manifesting it. And I would also suggest that you create a vision for your personal life. I, I think that's really important. A lot of people don't create a vision for their personal lives. They wake up every day just kind of like, you know, what, being in reaction to the day. But when you have a vision for what it is that you want, every day you are working towards what it is that you wish to create. And it can give you a lot more direction in life and it's very empowering feeling. So consider creating a vision for your personal life because ultimately the reasons that you're creating a business is for what it can do for your personal life. Tip number two find your customers. So when you start a business, it's important to understand that not everyone is going to be your customer. In fact, if you assume that everyone will be your customer, it can actually hinder the success of your business. It's best to understand early on that you need to have a target audience. There's a set demographic of people who are going to be your target audience and when you are selling products, you're really selling to them. When you're creating your marketing content, you're really creating your marketing content with them in mind. So when you sell to everyone, you're really selling to no one. Okay, so understand this in the beginning. Plus, you know, it gives you, alleviates some pressure because you understand that, hey, not everyone is going to like my product or my service or benefit from it, and that's okay. You know, it's okay for some people to not like it because they're not my target audience. You wanna make sure that you are clear on who your target audience is. And so the way that you discover that is by doing research. So go find out who other people that are selling similar products than you or have similar services, see who it is that they are selling to, discover who their demographic is, and then you can pull from that in the early stages of your business. And then as your business expands and you have your own customer base, you can actually um, survey them and try and determine who it is that is your customer base and really truly understand who your own customers are. Now, once you have an understanding of who your target audience is, you have to ask yourself, where are they? So one mistake that a lot of small business owners make is they decide that, okay, I'm selling this product and I'm just gonna sell it on Amazon or Shopify or Etsy because I heard those were good platforms to sell products. But that's really not a great strategy. Um, what's better is figuring out, okay, once I understand who my target audience is, I have to understand where are they? Where are they spending their time? So if I'm selling handmade jewelry and, I'm, and it's you know, maybe an expensive jewelry, I'm selling maybe to females primarily between the ages of 18 and 30 and maybe they're spending a lot of their time on Etsy. And so Etsy might be my ideal platform. But if I'm selling you know, maybe luxury jewelry and at a premium price, maybe my target audience is a higher age demographic and perhaps they're not spending time on Etsy. Maybe they're spending more time offline. They're not really familiar with the online shopping and I have to maybe have a different place to sell my goods like at local shops or at uh, trade shows or perhaps um, I would sell on my own website in that case. Um, so you have to figure out where it is that your target audience is spending their time and the same applies for when it comes to marketing. Just keep this in mind, this is kind of a bit of a side note, um, that when it comes to marketing, there's a lot of different avenues that you can take and it can feel really overwhelming, especially with online digital marketing. You know, you've got Instagram ads and Facebook and Google and there's just so much that you have to learn, but you don't have to do it all. 
Just understand who your target audience is and where are they spending most of their time. If they're younger, maybe they're spending a lot of time on TikTok, then it would be smart for you to invest your time and money into advertising on TikTok. If they're older, probably Facebook. So this is kind of a, a little bit of a project. You have to learn about this stuff, understand the different demographics of the different platforms, uh, and then figure out what the demographic is for your products or services that you're going to be selling. And I have a little tip for you on this subject. One of the best things that you can do when you're starting a business is to research your competitors. Your competitors are your competitors for a reason. They know what they're doing. So they spent time figuring out what works, what doesn't work. They spent time and money figuring out what works and doesn't work, and you get to benefit from that. So go find your competitors, subscribe to their mailing list, buy their products, follow them on social media, and basically obsess over them and see what their strategy is. When you, when you follow them on all these platforms, you see what kind of emails they send out, you really get to learn what their marketing strategy is, and that helps save you so much time with your business so that you can basically model their marketing strategy and apply it to your business and have success faster. Number three, make yourself known. You might have the best product or service that really can help people. It's a really great, awesome item, but if you don't market your product, nobody's going to see it and therefore nobody will buy it. So marketing is at the core of your business and it's really important to take the time to learn how to market your products and services and also know where to do that. And I would say that social media is one of the best places to market your products and services because billions of people all over the world spend a lot of time every day on these devices. And social media is free. So you can create an Instagram page to market your products or service. And regardless of if you're selling online or offline, you can still use social media to market your products. And so what makes a successful social media page? Well, you have to have beautiful designs. The businesses on Instagram that do the best are the ones who have beautiful aesthetics. And so for myself, when I was starting a business, I really struggled with this because I didn't really do a lot of graphics design and I thought that you had to like have Photoshop skills to create beautiful graphics for Instagram and Facebook and um, then came around the Instagram stories and all that and so I struggled with this. I ended up having to hire someone to create these graphics for me, someone who did have Photoshop experience. But if you're just starting a business and you don't have the capital to hire someone else, it's not always realistic. So the better alternative is to find solutions that can help you create these amazing graphics and designs so that you can have a lot of success on your social media. And one of the best places to create social content and the sponsor of today's video is Vista Create. Vista Create is a design platform that allows everyone to create designs that look like they took hours in minutes. And so they help small businesses to craft unique and professional social and digital content. And one thing I really love about them is that they have so many templates. So for someone like myself who did not have any kind of graphic design um, background or was not savvy at all on the computer with Photoshop, this is a great solution because you can easily craft beautiful, professional, aesthetically pleasing designs that you can use across all social media platforms and it takes minutes. It's really easy to do and you don't need to hire someone to help you in your business with um, the design work. So I'm going to hop behind my computer now to show you how it works. So I'm here on Vista Creates website. And as you can see here, you can make a whole bunch of designs. You can do Instagram post, square video post, Facebook post, Instagram video story, full HD, YouTube thumbnail, poster. I mean, there's just so much. Actually, let me just show you. And of course, all of these have templates. There's even TikTok videos, Snapchat, um, covers. There's a lot you can do. Um, so you really, once you have Vista Create, you never really have to create digital content anywhere else. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm first going to go over here to Brand Kits. So I think Brand Kits is a really cool feature that they have because when you're starting a business, you're creating a brand and you wanna make sure that you stay on brand. And so this is your opportunity to get creative, decide what kind of logo you want, 
Um, you want to make sure that you are choosing the colors for your brand, the fonts for your brand, and you want to choose a few of them. You don't want to choose a whole bunch, and then you want to stay consistent with that. So if you're making a post on Instagram or Facebook or um, TikTok, you want to make sure that your branding is consistent so people can recognize it across all platforms. And so what you can do here with brand kits is you can upload your brand kit so that you can instantly apply it to all of the designs that you create. So it saves you a lot of time. So first, let's go ahead and actually create a logo. We'll come back here in just a second. All right, so let's go over here and let's search um, let's say I'm starting a jewelry business. Let's keep with that theme. So I'm gonna search here jewelry to see what kind of templates they have. Um, if I don't like any of the templates, I can start a blank logo, but I'm gonna pick a template here because they do look like they have some really cool ones and then I'm gonna modify it to suit my needs. So let's see here. All right, I quite like this logo. I even like the, the name of it. So I'm going to now modify it to suit my needs. So I'm gonna call my brand Moon Ring Jewelry. And I like the colors, I like everything about this. Um, but let's say I wanted to change the color a little bit. I can do that. Maybe go with a little bit of a beige color. And then if I wanna change the color of that, maybe I can go with a bit of a darker color so it stands out more. And then this, I'd want it to stand out a bit more. Okay, you can also make it change the opacity. All right, so this is gonna be my logo, so now I'm going to download it. I can choose the type of file that I want. I'm gonna do JPEG for now. Great, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the brand kits, and I'm gonna upload my logo, my new logo. And I'm gonna change my color uh, palette. I'm gonna go for more of the colors that we used in the logo. All right, so those are my colors, and now I'm gonna choose my fonts. All right, so we're gonna to go to the template section once we've created the brand kit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose what I wanna make. I would like to make an Instagram story post. So I'm gonna go here to social media and I'm gonna go here to Instagram story. And I'm gonna choose a template that is suitable for what it is that I want to achieve uh, through the story. So this is kind of cute, a Q and A. I actually could use this. You know what, I'm actually going to use this for myself rather than um, creating a story for the fake brand that I just made up. I'm actually gonna create this for my story so you guys can see this on my story. And when I do Q and A's, because I do them oftentimes on Instagram, um, I could use this. All right, there we go. So now I can put this image in here and I can maybe go to my brand kit. Maybe get a circle sphere, go to my brand kit and choose my color. Get a little bit bigger than the image and then put it behind. All right, how does that look? And then I'm gonna add my username. And there we go. So I have now a template that I can use and I can download it. All right, so you can see here that there are just so many templates to choose from. Um, so if you want something quick and easy to use, then you can go ahead and use some of these templates. It might take a little bit of time to figure out how to play around with it, but um, once you figure that out, it can be done in minutes. Um, and so they have templates, but you can also, of course, create from scratch if you would like to do that. And then I also want to show you here that they have created assets. They have real royalty-free stock photos and videos, which can be really uh, valuable for you because maybe when you're starting your business, you don't have a ton of photos that you can use in your marketing assets. 
and it would help to really spice it up and add some variety to your marketing. And so you can use these images and usually you would have to pay for royalty free uh, images on other uh, platforms. So it's like an individual uh, separate subscription, but with Vistacrate you can get access to a lot of royalty free stock and videos um, and in different categories. So here they have yoga, music, animals. So if we clicked here, we can click on the business one. So we can use these images if we wanted to in our designs. And there's also some videos as well. Over here, videos. So you can do music, family, slow motion, 4K, Christmas, etc. So yeah, they have a lot to offer. And there's tutorials here for you to learn how to do that. And pretty much they've got everything that you need for all your design needs in your business and for all your digital content and all your social media content. So after you finish watching this video, you can sign up for Vista Create Starter Plan for free. You can start designing in just minutes. So visit tatianajames.com slash vistacreate or click the link in the description box below. Tip number four, what's your USP? Every successful business needs to know and needs to have a USP, which stands for Unique Selling Proposition. What makes your business different from the rest? What makes your business stand out? Listen, if you're just gonna sell or do the same thing that everyone else is doing, you're gonna see minimal success. I've seen it myself, I've learned it the hard way, at this stage in the game, you really got to have something unique about your business, but it doesn't have to be something major. It can be something as simple as free shipping or something as simple as um, just the colors of your products being more unique than the rest. Maybe they're just more in style. So I'll give you a few examples of unique selling propositions. FedEx has overnight shipping. Okay, that was their unique selling proposition and that's what really made them stand out in the beginning as a shipping and courier company. Zappos is a very famous online shoe company and what really helped them reach success was that they allow their customers to buy as many pairs of shoes as they want. They can try all of them on at home and then they can return them for free because they understood that one of the barriers for people when it comes to buying shoes online is that people feel hesitant because they know that different shoes fit differently and it's very risky to buy shoes online and then not be able to return them or have to pay return fees, return postage. And so they understood the concerns of the uh, demographic that they were serving. And so they decided to stand out by offering something that customers could not deny or could not turn down. They said, we're gonna allow you to order as many shoes as you want, try them all on, keep what you like, and what you don't like, just send it back to us for free. And so that helped them to stand out from all of their other competitors and allowed them to create massive success. Tom's Shoes, which is another shoe company, has a unique selling proposition and it's charitable work. One third of their profits go to grassroots goods. And so um, there's nothing necessarily unique about their shoes, but they take a portion of their profits and they donate it. I think there's another shoe company that I was reading about, I don't remember the name, but for every shoe that you buy, they donate a pair to someone in need. So there's charitable things that you can do in your company as well that can be your unique selling proposition. There's also a food wrap company called Bees Wrap. So they understood that there is an issue with the traditional plastic food wrap that stores food because it's wasteful and it's not good for the environment. And so they understood that what they could create was a beeswax wrap and this was a great solution for people who are very eco-conscious, who want to be environmentally friendly and who are just in general conscious about um, the waste that they're leaving. And so they understood their target audience and they created something unique and allows them to stand out from other food storage, food wrap brands. And maybe you're selling clothing and there's nothing unique about the clothing, but maybe your clothing is made with organic materials. It's free from chemicals and dyes 
buys. That is a unique selling proposition. And so whatever your unique selling proposition is, you need to make sure that you shout it from the rooftops to make sure that everyone knows about it. So when people go to your website, that's the first thing they see. Maybe you have a pop-up and you say, you know, all our clothes are organic. They're free from synthetic chemicals. They're free from dyes. They're organic. You know, you have to make sure that people are aware of what it is that makes you unique because that's what's going to help them to choose to purchase from you over your competitors. All right, tip number five. We're getting close to the end here. I've got a bonus tip for you, so just hang in there with me. Number five is to talk about your business to everyone. You can't have a business if you don't talk about your business. So I know it might feel a little bit uncomfortable, especially when you're first getting started. I know that when I first started my business, I was so embarrassed about it, which is so, I mean, now I just feel embarrassed that I was even embarrassed um, because I should have been proud that I was starting a business. You know, it takes courage to start something on your own, but um, I didn't really talk about it with a lot of people. And it is really, really important that you do because when you share your business with other people, well, that's how you, you market your business, right? You can do digital marketing, but there's also word of mouth marketing. Share it with your family, share it with your friends, share it with strangers you meet. If it comes up, always use the opportunity. You gotta be like those people in Hollywood who whenever you meet someone, they're always telling you what their business is about because they're always seeking the opportunity. They know that there must be an opportunity somewhere and they know if they don't talk about their business, they will miss those opportunities. So you gotta be the same way, okay? It might you know, be a little bit uncomfortable at first, but you gotta get used to it because it's what's really gonna help you to expand and grow your business and make it popular. And I would also say that if you do have challenges in your business, when there's an appropriate time, share that with others. So if you're in a conversation with someone and you're talking about business, and the person's asking you about how your business is going and you sincerely have certain challenges and you know that person's also in business as well, then just share it because you never know if that person can be a resource for you. Oftentimes when I've had challenges in my business, I would share them and then that person would say, you know what, actually, I know someone who does this and I could put you in contact with them. Um, they might be able to help solve that challenge for you. So you never know, and so don't you know overly share your problems because then nobody's really gonna wanna be around you because they're only hearing problems from you. But if there's an appropriate time, go for it because they, there may be solutions out there and connections with people that can really help. And the bonus tip for you, it's to be patient. Please be patient. It takes time to build a business. It takes a lot of effort. However much time and however much work you think it's gonna to take to build a successful business, times it by 10, maybe even times it by 100. <laughs> I don't say this to discourage you, I say it to prepare you because it does, it's not a walk in the park. You know, if maybe for some people they get a little bit more lucky than others, but for the most part, people who are successful with their businesses, they've had to work really hard and it takes a lot longer for them than they expect. And it's good for you to anticipate this in the beginning because if you have an expectation that in six months time I'm going to become financially free and if it six months rolls around and you haven't met that goal, you can be very discouraged and give up. But when you at least understand that, you know what, it's probably going to take longer than I think, it's probably going to require more work than I think, then you're anticipating that. And it's actually more encouraging because when things do arise, when it does take longer than you thought, um, you're, you're okay with it because you understand it's part of the process. So be patient. For myself, it took me four years for my business to really become a success. And understand that maybe the first business that you start is not gonna be a huge hit. And maybe not the second either or the third. But all of these businesses, even though they weren't maybe a success, they're not failures either. They're only failures if you don't take anything from them. Each time you start something new, you're building something, you're learning stuff as you go. You can't deny that you're learning stuff. You have to learn stuff to be creating things that new things and doing new things. And so you take those experiences with you and also 
these different experiences, these different businesses can lead you to the one that ends up being the success for you. And so with myself personally, that's what happened. I started multiple businesses and they all led me to the one that I had a lot of success with. And so I would encourage you to be patient, be open-minded, and understand that when you start a business, new opportunities will come around. And you might be going in one direction and a new opportunity comes, and maybe it's actually a better opportunity and you go in a different direction. But don't get shiny object syndrome. I've seen it too many times with the people that I've done coaching with. They start one thing, they see another thing, they start that thing, they see another thing, they start that thing, and then all they've ever done was start things. They've never actually completed anything or got further with any of the businesses that they started. So when you start something, see it through. Make sure that you don't stop. You have to have grit. You have to have this uh, unrelenting desire to create success with that business. And it's gonna require a lot from you, but it's gonna be super fulfilling because once you achieve those goals and once you get the ball rolling and you are selling to customers and you, you, you are creating the success, it's like, wow, you had a challenge, you set a goal for yourself and you achieved it and now you're creating a positive track record. You know that you're someone who achieves goals, you know that you're someone who can create success because you have created success, and it really boosts that self-confidence and allows you to become a very confident and successful business owner. So those are my tips for you guys. I hope that you enjoyed all five tips and the bonus one. Let me know in the comment section which of these tips you enjoyed the most, uh, which of them benefited you the most. If you would like to try Vista Create, go to tatianajames.com slash vistacreate, or just click the link in the description box below, and it'll take you to their page and you can try it out. It's gonna be a great resource for your small business. All right guys, thanks so much and I'll see you later, bye-bye.